During Catherine's reign, the Russians consolidated their control of the Black Sea. But Russia wanted more, free access to the Mediterranean. Sixty years later, during the reign of Tsar Nicholas I, this would result in yet another war with the Turks and another historic battle. Because the Ottoman Empire controlled the gate out of the Black Sea into which Russia could trade and expand its power into the Mediterranean, and that was the Dardanelles. If the Russians achieved their objective, they would succeed in opening the door to the Southern Ocean that was traditionally the private lake of the British and French navies. As a result, officials in London and Paris watched this new conflict with grave concern. On the 30th of November, 1853, a Turkish squadron of seven frigates and three smaller warships was anchored in the harbor of Sinope on the southern coast of the Black Sea. At that time, steam power was just beginning to be introduced into warship design. But the backbone of most navies was still the sailing ship of the line, with its rows of guns firing broadsides of solid cannonballs. Turkey possessed a fleet of European-style sailing warships. The same was true of the Russian fleet, but with one crucial difference. Some of its ship's cannons, in addition to firing traditional solid shot, could also fire projectiles filled with explosives called shells. Through the whole history of wooden ships, what you see is mostly solid cannonballs. When those things hit, they damage the ship, they create splinters that will kill people, but they don't destroy the ship in one shot. If it explodes, if it's a shell, the ship is shattered. If it's not shattered, it burns, it'll explode itself later. Now, navies realized that, but they hadn't fought any naval wars then. The Russians are the first to use it in combat. On the early afternoon of the 30th of November, 1853, a Russian fleet of six ships of the line and two frigates, some of which carried shell-firing guns, sailed into Sinope Harbor, trapping the Turkish squadron. The Russians were commanded by Admiral Pavel Nakimov. The Russian ships anchored just out of range of the Turkish guns and quickly opened a withering fire. Their shells devastated the Turks. Within two hours, the entire Turkish squadron was obliterated. Russian losses were minimal. Ottoman sea power was devastated and Russia emerged victorious. It shocked the rest of the world. Everybody now realized that shell firing guns were the key. It would also be one of the last all-out battles between wooden warships. Russia's cherished goal of capturing the Dardanelles seemed imminent, but the British and French had other ideas. For the British and French, it wasn't about Turkey. What it was about was Russian access to the Mediterranean and the Middle East. So when the Russians went after the Turks to get free access to the Mediterranean through the Dardanelles, they had to fight, and they did. England and France decided to intervene in what would become the Crimean War. Throughout the course of the war, the Russian Navy would fight battles using each and every fleet it had, including the Black Sea Fleet, the Baltic Fleet, and even the tiny Pacific Fleet. But in spite of valiant efforts, it was no match for the combined might of the British and French navies. The 9th of September, 1855. A combined Anglo-French naval and land force of 89 combat vessels and 62,000 troops laid siege to the fortress city of Sevastopol, the home port of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. This is the same force commanded by the same Admiral Pavel Nakimov that had annihilated the Turks less than two years before at Sinope. With neither ground forces nor an adequate garrison to protect its port, the prospects for Sevastopol were bleak. After a heated debate, the Russian commanders decided that the best way to defend the city 